Hare Krishna. So thank you for coming today. I will continue our discussion on Krishna Leela. So the Brahma Vimohan Leela, the title which we have is from test to taste. So it is the flow or the evolution in Brahmaji's understanding of Krishna's position. So initially he wanted to test is this really God? And then eventually he toward the end we'll see in his prayers he's overflowing with appreciation for Vrindavan and he has got taste for the sweetness of Krishna in Vrindavan. <clears throat> so the main lesson that we will be exploring is in our own lives don't try to test God try to taste God so we all face situations when it seems as if we are just all alone in this big bad world and we start thinking is does God really care is God going to help me does God even exist and that set of questions can also come in our mind so rather than trying to test God you know that no if this works like this then God exists and God cares if this doesn't work like this then God doesn't exist rather than trying to test God we need to taste God that means experience God's presence God's love the soothing uplifting experience that comes when we try to absorb ourselves in him without making our devotion conditional to his acting in any particular way so it's not easy but we'll discuss it. that will be the theme that we will discuss now the brahma vimohan leela is a very uh, intriguing pastime because brahma himself is the person who has led the gods in praying to vishnu and Brahma has also led the gods in offering the Garbha Stuti, which is the praises to Krishna when he is in the womb of Devaki in the prison cells of Kamsa. And yet that same Brahma is so bewildered that he starts wondering whether Krishna is God and then he starts trying to test him. So what happens in between? Hey, for all of us, we, like yesterday I said, our intelligence is not like a fixed deposit. It's like a stock market share. So basically, our knowledge or our understanding is dynamic. That means we have certain conceptions in our life. And then as we encounter situations, then we modify those conceptions this I thought it was like this say we interact with some person and think this person is very short tempered but then we interact with them in different situations and they say actually not short tempered is very concerned and because they care so much that's why they're doing like this not just the idea so basically it's natural that we revise our understandings so there's nothing wrong in that but sometimes we might take one incident and use that to label a person. If somebody normally behaves very well, but suddenly somebody has a temper. Start thinking, you know, why? Maybe this is actually all that the other time the person was doing was a show, this is the real person. It may not be like that. So basically, we have a particular understanding and that understanding changes as per the experiences we have in life. And sometimes the change is for the better, sometimes the change is for the worse. So that's why we need to have our intelligence constantly with us so that we are able to process our experiences properly otherwise our experiences may downgrade our intelligence instead of upgrading it so Brahmaji is aware that it is Vishnu who has descended as Krishna however when Krishna deliver de destroys and delivers one demon after another and then finally he delivers he destroys Aghasur Aghasur is such a terrible demon that even the gods live in fear of him and all the gods are jubilant 
But Brahmaji, when he hears that Krishna has destroyed Aghasur, he's amazed. He's Krishna has killed Aghasur. So then he descends to see, really, how did this happen? It's in the Abrahamic religions, there is a, a story of David and Goli the Goliath. The Goliath is a giant and David is just a small 8 or 10 year old, 8 year old boy. And then they have a fight and he just, with a sling, hits one stone at Goliath and Goliath dies. So it's like the odds are so mismatched and still there is a victory. So you could say almost every story in Krishna Leela is like a David and Goliath story. The demons are much much bigger than Krishna. And, uh, but Krishna wins and almost effortlessly. One characteristic of Krishna Leela is that Krishna does not let the demons interfere with the playful mood of Vrindavan. And that's why Vidura when he's, Uddhava when he's remembering Krishna's pastime in the second, third canto in front of Vidura. So he says that Krishna's killing of demons is Bala Kridanakam Iva. It's just like a child playing. One characteristic of Krishna is that Krishna in Vrindavan never uses any weapons. So all the demons are killed just effortlessly. Uh, some, some demon comes and Krishna just moves his hand forward and the hand goes into the fist, the fist goes into the mouth and uh, it dies. Who is that demon? Keshi. Keshi, the horse demon. Similarly, Trunavarth comes and raises Krishna up and Krishna just increases his weight. And actually our Acharya has described that Krishna doesn't even have to, that Trunavarth does not die because he crashes down. Actually even, even when he is above, he is holding Krishna tightly and Krishna holds him tightly. And he thinks oh this boy is scared that's why he is holding me tightly. But Krishna holds him so tightly that he chokes his nasal pipe while holding him. And even before he crashes down, his eyes pop out. So, Krishna doesn't use any weapons. Just like a child playing, he just effortlessly kills the demons. And Aghasur also, they're just like, kids are playing. And he just walks in. The other kids walk inside the snake demon. And Krishna follows. You know, Prabhupada was asked once, you know, from the Vedic perspective, did dinosaurs exist? So Prabhupada said, oh, why the, why get so excited about it? Dinosaur, 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 we had Aghasur. <laughs> <laughs> so, some people get very excited about certain things. Prabhupada's mood was, you know, there is nothing really worth getting excited about in the material world. Oh, this creature existed, this creature got extinct. Oh, we were here and we went to this planet or we went to out of land. What, what big difference is going to make? So, Krishna entered into Aghasur and he was huge. But Krishna went in and he closed his eyes and he thought, he closed his mouth, his jaws and he thought he's one now. But inside Krishna just expanded himself and he became, he just ripped his belly from inside. So, it was almost as if Krishna had lost, he had been devoured. And then, not only did he have win, but he just effortlessly. If we compare, Vritrasur also had devoured, Vritrasur had devoured Indra. And Indra goes into Vritrasur's body. But then, Indra has to cut through Vritrasur's body and he says that he is cutting and cutting and cutting internally for, for nearly a year. And finally, he emerges out. And it's not that it is his cutting that kills Vritrasur. Vritrasur has decided that my life is over and meditating on the Lord, he leaves the body. So Vritrasur is actually, so Indra is actually for one year cutting a corpse. So it's like <laughs> worthless work. But, <laughs> but the point is that Krishna doesn't have to put any efforts. Bala Kridana Kamiva. So, this small child, without any weapons, killing such big demons, this is astonishing. So, that itself amazes Brahma and he comes and sees what's going on over here. Now, as a, uh, the Krishna in Vrindavan has said, he just acts like a child. So, as a child, he, now the demon has been killed and it is like, uh, 
for the Vrajagopas, Krishna's killing demons is like an appetizer. You know, you have some excel, like say some people watch a movie and in the intermission in the movie, they have some popcorn or something to eat. So, now they watch this movie, live movie you could say, of Krishna killing the demon and then they have their meals. So now when Krishna and the Gopas are having their meals, at that time what happens? Every Gopa feels, am I audible behind? I mean, okay. So every Gopa feels that, let me offer what I have to Krishna. So Krishna, although he does special things, he does not act as if I am a special person. He acts just like he is one of them. And everybody gets their food and uh, Krishna offers his food to them and sometimes they offer their food to him. And somebody doesn't offer their food, Krishna seizes the food from them. And it is like small children having fun. And on this particular day, Madhu Mangal, who is... Uh, you could say Krishna's in-house comedian. You know, he has brought some buttermilk, some charge. Now, Madhu Mangal is relatively from a poor family. So, Brahmanas are, are generally supposed to be poor. They live on charity and sometimes Brahmanas, some Brahmanas get a lot of charity. But generally, Brahmanas are not very wealthy. So, he feels, oh, the charge, the, bat charge, the buttermilk I have got, this is not good enough for Krishna to eat. But he says, if Krishna sees it, then Krishna will want it. And this is really not good enough for Krishna to take. Just like when Sudama wanted to offer that uh, chipped rice, so initially he, he said, no, no, this, he, after he saw Krishna's opulence, he felt, no, this, I cannot give it to Krishna. But then Krishna wanted it. So something similar, uh, Madhu Mangal thought that if I am going to take it in front of Krishna, then Krishna will uh, want it. So just before all of them, just as all of them were assembling for taking their food, sitting near <coughs> the Yamuna, he went away and he went behind a nearby thicket and behind a tree and there he started drinking his buttermilk. And Krishna looked around, hey, where is Madhu Mangal? <laughs> and then he went and he saw, oh, Madhu Mangal is privately eating something. Oh! And then when Madhu Mangal saw that Krishna is coming, he became panicky. And he gulped what he had down completely. Now when he gulped everything, suppose we drink too much liquid, then what happens? Jaws swell. So, like that, he drank and some of the buttermilk was in his mouth. And he finished it. He said, now I finished it. Now Krishna can't take it. But Krishna came running and... <laughs> <laughs> so, now Krishna clapped on his jaws and the buttermilk came out. <laughs> And not only the butter will come out, actually the butter will fell on Krishna's body. So what was, what was juta for him, uh, that actually came out and Krishna like picked it up from his hands and ate it, where it was on his body. And when Brahmaji saw this from above, he got a culture shock. <laughs> what? Now he has this idea of Vishnu, being grand and opulent and to be worshipped in great reverence and you know, there you have to have elaborate rituals before uh, you can purificatory act ceremonies before you can offer food to Krishna to be to the Lord and here what to speak of any ritual he is taking the food from uh, that has actually come out of somebody's mouth and not only come, it's like even if you take some juta food. Actually, juta is such a word, you don't have an English equivalent to it. You can call it remnants, but it doesn't convey the idea. Hmm. There, are, there are certain, uh, in a, every translation is more or less an interpretation. Because whenever you translate, you cannot translate the exact word into another language. And this often happens when you have phrases or idioms or sayings. Mm, like in Hindi, there is a saying, Lato ke bhut, baato se nahi mante. If you try to translate it into English, uh -uh, what is it? The ghosts of kicks don't learn by words. What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so, the point here is, 
that actually uh, this this concept of jhuta you know, what is it's it's something which is uh, cul cultures are a little concerned with purity that you don't eat something which has been eaten by someone else you generally if there's affection among people the same family people might eat each other's food but normally we don't once i was traveling for a program with some western devotees or westernized devotees you could say and then you know whenever i i travel i have a bottle bottle with me and to, when i drink water i touch the mouth to a, uh, the bottle to my mouth and then so i just drank some water and they were saying you know i'm thirsty can i have some water and i said actually uh, i have touched my mouth just so what water is still remaining there <laughs> 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 then i said actually you know but uh, i was thinking what do you how do you explain jhuta i said actually <laughs> actually i said that you know in our culture if uh, if you have touched your mouth to some water we don't share it with others he says what if i would be dying of thirst would you still not give me water <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes cultural differences are such that they're very difficult for people to bridge so then they felt very uh, so i used to i did give that water but they were very unhappy he says you give classes talking about love and care but you don't have enough care to give the water also <laughs> So now I decided if I'm going to travel with any Western people, I'm going to drink from above. <laughs> so, so somebody who is not from that culture, this culture shock that Brahma ji had might be difficult to understand. The the food, the the buttermilk came out from Krishna, uh, the Mangal's mouth, and Krishna drank it. Krishna ate it, and Brahma ji said. this can't be god this can't be god how can god do anything like this and then he started thinking hey no maybe i should test this now he said if how can i test so he came up with a plan at that time so his plan was that he would try to trick krishna And because Krishna was acting just like a normal coward boy, so Krishna and Madhu Mangal went back and they sat down in a circle and they were eating food. Many of you may have seen that picture of Krishna. Ara, ara, they are all sitting in a circle on the banks of the Jamuna and they are all eating food. And they are not just eating food; they are also drinking in Krishna's beauty, and they are all uh, relishing the whole experience. Uh, and as they are doing this, the cows are grazing nearby now what brahma ji does is brahma ji allures the cows allures the cows by more green grass when a cow uh, when a, say an animal eats some grass animals also have free will but the scope of their free will is very limited we humans have free will our free will you could say is much more it can be much more say for example if a um, cat sees a mouse the cat can't think today is ekadashi let me fast <laughs> <laughs> so if the cat sees two mice and both of them are running away the cat has to, has free will to choose whether i should pursue this mouse or that mouse so when a calf is eating grass when the grass in front of it gets over okay, should i eat the grass on this side or should i eat the grass on that side Now it could be that the grass on both sides is equal, but which grass should I eat? That is its free will. So animals can choose how to satisfy their bodily drives. Humans can choose whether to satisfy their bodily drives. So that is the greater magnitude of the free will that we have. Say now, not that we can completely stop eating, but we can regulate our eating. We can choose on certain days to fast. so we can choose so that is the greater magnitude of the free will we have but anyway these cows they ate little grass and they looked around and that grass looks so attractive and then they went there brahma ji had created an illusion that wherever they went they felt the grass ahead is even better 
so rather than waiting to eat the grass how they moved further and they came to a particular point and say oh the grass there looks even greener and then they went further see so, so these cows they are they are like babies they like small children they are so sometimes you no know, mother is doing some work at home and there is a baby is nearby and a mother keeps her eye in between and the baby just maybe lying on the bed playing with some toys and then the mother looks hey baby is gone now where did the baby go i even think the baby is just crawling along it will be a little nearby but you see the baby nowhere nearby maybe something was really allured the baby that baby ran away from there so like that the when the vraj gopas saw that the cows were nowhere nearby they became alarmed although they are they are young they are they are also themselves children but they had that deep rooted sense of responsibility that actually uh, this is our due, this is our responsibility we have to take care of this cows so the <clears throat> so because they had this deep rooted sense of responsibility what happened was they immediately got up oh we have to find these cows they were about to get up and all of them because each of them had cows which had been entrusted by their family to them <clears throat> but now what happened now when they were all getting up like this suddenly krishna said hey come on all of you eat this food now somebody is eating food and then they have to get up normally we try to avoid that just relish the food nicely so he said that okay krishna says i'll take care of this now although krishna is is god but here krishna doesn't act as a god demanding service rather he acts as somebody who will serve his devotees and he says i'll take care of this and the gopas agree to it so because for them it's their equals and yes yeah, sometimes we may get up sometimes he may get up what is the big deal and krishna gets up and krishna starts searching and as he is searching 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 and he looks here he looks there and he doesn't see the cows anywhere and he tries to follow their footprints now but it's it's such a green grassy area that he can't even detect any footprints properly and he goes up a hill and he goes down a hill and he goes near by the lakes and he goes into the forest and as he can't find he starts running initially is walking and he starts running and he's running here and there and everywhere he goes up and down and and he's not able to find them anywhere now this is a serious thing because for them to lose their cows he is like losing their livelihood of course it's not that uh their life you literally depends on the cows it depends on the cows but for they are preparing for that and it is at that time they show their responsibility and they entrusted more responsibility afterwards so it's a matter of grave concern and krishna becomes very serious he and the krishna has gone on a mission and he has failed and it's his failure but it's the failure of all the gopas and he doesn't want normally when we are doing something we don't want to if somebody if we chosen something or something has been entrusted to us we don't want to fail it so krishna keeps searching keeps searching as like the on sunday we had this uh, class on t on ramayan so team work in the ramayan i spoke in the uh, london school of college of vedic studies so there i explained how the monkeys who had gone in search for sita they had to come back within one month but one month had passed and a southern group they didn't come back because they are pressing on there so much territory to search and they they had a fair good fairly good idea that sita must be in the southern direction so there's one force one side which is saying let's go back now but another side is saying no let's search on we might just find so when you're searching how much you keep searching how much you keep searching and when do you stop it's a very difficult decision to make i finally krishna decided i just can't find it and then he thought maybe the cow i have been searching all along maybe the cows went somewhere and maybe they have come back and all along i have been searching it's like some children get lost 
they are lost for us but they go somewhere and they come back on their own so maybe they have come back and krishna comes back and he comes back and he's thinking maybe the cows are there back but instead of the cows being there he finds that the coward boys are also not there hey what's this oh it's it's like you lose one thing it's bad enough but it's like I, there was a devotee friend of mine in america he he had been in india for yatra and everything and he got many mails but he said i'll just he didn't know, he wanted to cut off from his job entirely kind of cut off from his material life so he said i'll come back to america and then i look at all the mails so he came back and he went to work and when he went to work he found his office only was not there apparently during that period of 25 days or whatever 20 days he was not there his company had shut down the company had sold the premises and somebody else had bought the premises and some other office was there so <laughs> it was like it was nothing was there at that time so he, uh, all of us we presume certain things will stay unchangeable we know that life keeps changing but we need some baseline things which are unchanging and on that baseline unchange a uh, uh, platform of unchangeability we can manage the changes but if the baseline itself changes then it's very disorienting so the cow cow is getting lost is disturbing but it happens every evening when krishna comes back with the cows he has to make sure that no calf is left cow is left because his calves have this a tendency to stray off and he makes sure he, that's why krishna when they return at night krishna comes back at the end he's the last person to come and he looks at every single calf and if anyone is missing not just the calves in his herd but also the calves in the other herds now for the Uh, for the gopas for the vrajivasis uh, the cows are not just the source of their livelihood not just a source of wealth the cows are also like their family members yeah, that's why <clears throat> we'll see how brahma ji later is appreciates the cows being so cl- close relationship with krishna so in india sometimes uh, there is this report of uh, cow protector is killing some people and it's portrayed in religious angles oh hindus are killing muslims but actually uh, there is very little religious in that it is more relational and uh, financial the, the cow smuggling business it's it's one of the biggest businesses in rural india and you know, normally if you in if somebody has is a tailor and somebody is stealing their machine their their tailoring machine no they'll be desperate to protect it if somebody is a parent and somebody is somebody tries to abduct their child they'll become desperate so for for indian villagers farmers the cows are both they are like what is the ta- what is the tailoring machine for a tailor and what is a child for a parent the children grow up drinking the milk of that cow they so they sort of, they treat the cow like a family member and suddenly somebody comes and steals them then there is and it's not just one two it's like a multi billion dollar smuggling businesses there and that's why these people have themselves because somehow in the rural villages the villages uh, the police is not very strong and police is often politicalized so that's why they form their own uh, gau rakshaks uh, squads they form the cow protector squads and it's not that only muslims are targeted there are many cases where hindus have also been targeted it's not hindu or muslim it's who is smuggling if anybody is stealing and smuggling cows they are targeted but these stories are these cases are given a religious angle and it's portrayed as if oh these hindus are so intolerant but it's it's, it's actually got very little to do with religion and is more got to be to with relationships and with livelihood so of course we don't want to go into politics here but the point i'm making over here is that losing cows is like a catastrophe for 
for for cow herds losing cows is like a catastrophe so what brahma ji did is not just a small trivial thing or taking away the cows now see mm, children emulate their parents in general they say what is that just like a pet or a monkey what monkey sees monkey does so similarly what children see what they do so when the children see that the parents are so concerned about these cows so even if they don't understand the whole thing about how the cows are so important for our livelihood or whatever but they also have that concern so for krishna and for all the cow herds for all the cows to disappear was a matter of great anxiety and then to for the cows also to dis- cow, for the cow herd boys also to be disappear now krishna was left completely alone so what brahma ji did as a part of his test so generally we all get strength in community we want people around us and especially with a small child to be left alone it's quite a matter of panic so krishna he was being tested by brahma ji that what he did he made krishna completely alone neither the cows with him nor his cow herd with him and then he this he was observing what will krishna do now so what krishna did we'll discuss after the julan we can have a few questions right now but i'll quickly summarize what i spoke i started by talking about how in our day to day in a, the theme which we were discussing is don't try to test god try to taste god so brahma ji tried to test krishna uh, and why did he try to test because you know, he although he knew krishna is god or rather krishna is vishnu who is descended but you know we have certain knowledge which is revised by our experiences and that revision can be upward or downward at times so in this case because krishna so playfully kills demons it appears almost unbelievable how can one it's every story of krishna lies like david goliath multiplied many times so krishna so effortlessly killed such a great demon without any weapons that itself was unbelievable for brahma ji and then on top of that when krishna was krishna took the food from the mouth of madhumangal and that was not just one off incident after that he saw that that's what they were doing other times also eating from each other's plates and he, he got a culture shock he said vishnu is to be offered food with the highest standard of purity and this is so impure so how can he be god and therefore he decided to test is he really god and the test was he wanted to render krishna all alone so will krishna act as a powerless child or will krishna manifest his powers so what he did was he allured the cows first and the cows krishna, he made the grass appear greener and greener near further and further and they just disappeared and animals also have free will how to fulfill their bodily drives humans can choose how to fulfill sorry whether to fulfill or not and then for the brijavasis to lose their cows was not just a loss of livelihood but a loss of someone like a family member also and the children they had internalized this and they were all in anxiety and krishna acted as a servant of all the gopas himself went to search and he searched far and wide up and down the hills right left and right in the forest couldn't find them anywhere and he came back disappointed and he was even more disturbed to see the gopas that also disappeared it's it's one change is difficult to tolerate but that which you consider the unchanging baseline if that changes that is extremely disorienting so when krish uh, was put in this disorienting situation where you know, both his friends and his cow cows could be lost that was a test to which krishna was put by brahma ji and how he responded we will discuss duly so any questions till now yes please
more frequently to sometimes happens to our mind as well. So mm. we get bewildered. Sometimes we have a um, bit of feeling for Krishna and sometimes we just feel no. You know, like you know what I'm trying to say, it's like we don't feel the same sort of thing and uh, it's just um, I'm just wondering how do you avoid this? Because you you saying even at the state stage of Brahma he's feeling like that how you know like Krishna is not Krishna and he's not God. You sometimes uh, feel like, you know, you don't have that um, when you're chanting or sometimes, you know, when you're doing some service, you don't have that sort of mood to do things, you know, and sometimes you have really good mood and I want to do it, I want to do it, but that changes, like, as you say, according true, yeah. to circumstances, so how can you avoid that? Yeah. Even at the level of the mind, it's, you know. Yes. So sometimes we just don't experience Krishna, we start, we don't get any taste in our chanting or in our bhakti. So how do we pers continue at that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. Generally, if we consider our consciousness comes from the soul, it goes through the mind to the body and then outward. And generally when we are doing some service, Although we can con connect with Krishna directly at the spiritual level, usually we don't at our condition stage. So we connect with Krishna through the mind, through the body and through some, some physical manifestation of Krishna. Say like we are uttering the holy name loudly. We are looking at a picture of Krishna. We are doing some service with Krishna practically. So now, quite often the mind obstructs the flow of that consciousness. So the mind starts feeling, eh, what is the use of this? There's no taste in this. This is I've done it so many times, it is boring. So when this kind of thing starts coming up, at that time, it's okay. So at that time, uh, there are broadly two things we can do. So this, either we have to raise our consciousness to the spiritual level or get our consciousness to the physical level. And normally we think the physical is material. But it's not that simple. Basically, the physical stimuli can't agitate us unless there is imagination of the mind. Hmm? Sometimes we may we may encounter a tempting situation. Say there is some sports match or some movie or some music um, which might be mundane, which we like. Uh, which we have an earlier like or which even now we have some fondness for but if you are doing some very urgent work maybe some deadline driven work in the company or something like that then even if that stimulus comes we don't let some our consciousness go too much in that direction and then when there is no imagination there is no agitation so it is not perception that causes agitation it is imagination that causes agitation of course you could say perception leads to imagination but not necessarily we all can, can think of times when we have had perceptions, but there is no imagination associated with that. So the point I'm making is that uh, when our mind is obstructing us in the practice of bhakti, at that time, uh, it is not that Krishna is no longer attractive. Krishna is still Rasaraj, but the mind is coming in the way. And so the consciousness of the soul comes from here to the mind and then the mind takes it somewhere else. Maybe, oh, this person did like this, when am I going to do this, how can I do that? So at that time, what we have to do is, uh, it's very difficult to deal with the mind at the level of the mind. It is possible, but it is easier to first get the consciousness out of the mind. That means, acknowledge, yeah, I'm feeling bored, but boredom is like a feeling which has come in my mind. I acknowledge it is there and I move on and do my work. So get the consciousness to the physical level maybe when chanting just take a few deep breaths and then focus on the sound of the holy name or maybe stand and maybe if you're sitting walk and chant do some physical activity get the consciousness out of the mind now sometimes if the temptation is very strongly a temptation agitation is very strongly at the physical level then we get the consciousness out of the body to the mind and there we think of Krishna. Maybe we chant, the whole, maybe we remember Krishna or something. So we have to be expert where our consciousness is getting agitated and where it is safe. So if it is the mind that is agitating the consciousness, then get it out of the mind, get it down to the physical level. 
do something physical which is you know, just if you're feeling very sleepy feeling very bored just walk up and walk and chant maybe wash your face do something if you're if you're reading and feeling sleepy then just start reading aloud you might read slower but i found reading aloud is a very it's a very powerful way of increasing absorption you don't have to read aloud to disturb everyone else but just verbalize it may slow down but actually it will will go deeper deeper whatever we are reading so it's it's one way to so we can't control how we feel but we can choose how we act we don't have to let our actions be dependent on our feelings i repeat this we can't control how we feel but we can choose how we act of course we may say if i if i don't feel like acting doing this why will i act but that's where we focus on the action and when we focus on the action then the, what happens the action itself gradually establishes a connection with krishna so my consciousness is coming from here through the mind to the body but the mind is obstructing so it's not allowing you to think about it only so i try to okay acknowledge this emotion is there but i focus on this it like say if you are doing some important work and some person who is very talkative that person comes now we just greet them acknowledge them and continue our work now they might keep chattering but if we look at them and start talking with them they will never leave us then for hours but if we just keep working now if we get up and try to push that person away i know they they will get we might get involved in that and they will be pushing and so many things just acknowledge their presence and continue the work so so it's it's good to try to uh, not battle with the feelings that is a losing battle usually it is better better than battling with the feelings is bypassing the feelings so acknowledge them but bypass them and you may need to find out what can i do phys- that will physically uh, maybe it could just be as i said chant aloud read aloud do something physical which gets us out of our head gets our consciousness out of our mind and gradually that, that boredom that distraction will go down so of course this is just one strategy but the principle is that the mind will interrupt us so that is what krishna says that yatad agre visham eva parinaame amrutopam that which tastes like poison in the beginning will taste like nectar in the end so sometimes the layer of poison is very thin and we do something and immediately we start experiencing joy we start experiencing taste sometimes that layer of poison might be very thick so we need to find out various strategies by which we can persevere through the poison so sometimes it might be just start doing it physically and gradually the 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 negative feeling will start going away or sometimes we might just have to take a break do something else and come back there's no set formula it's best to uh, see what works and learn that and then have a array of strategies available because the mind will obstruct us repeatedly and we have to find out how to get bypass its obstacles and move on okay thank you any other question one more question you can do before we go down <laughs> yeah Yeah. You know, I'm just saying, you know, you may think negatively in some way if you say something that's not um according to any proper teachings or anything. And then I was thinking um and uh, if you see this a lot, you might start thinking negatively about devotees in general. Mm. Um so I mean, what way should we view things that are anomalies or things that are devotees may seem to be doing that are not Okay. Mm. 
that's a tough question so if you see <laughs> if you see devotee is doing something which is anomalous not according to prabhupada's teachings we must habituate and see them repeatedly what do we do broadly there are three possibilities one is that devotee is doing something wrong and then we have a duty to either protect that devotee or at least inform others so that others are protected from that devotee's actions the other is that could be one extreme the other is that it's entirely our perception we are thinking what they are doing is wrong but actually uh, with respect to many things in life right and wrong is uh, there are certain core principles but there are some details and even the details are done in a different way that doesn't necessarily make it wrong we have even within krishna consciousness we could have krishna consciousness can't exist uh, like a transcendental bubble above the material world krishna consciousness is practiced in the material world and when it is practiced in the material world that means krishna consciousness will be expressed differently in different cultures so say the way devotees may practice krishna consciousness in india might be different from how they practice in uk might be different from how they practice it in in russia not entirely different but certain differences are inevitable so if you see traditionally also gaudiya vaishnavism itself what to speak of vaishnavism got the way gaudiya vaishnavism was practiced in bengal and in orissa and vrindavan there are significant differences there are different kirtan styles also narottam das thakur has kirtan style the mayapur vaishnavas had their own kirtan style so there are differences so not every difference is a deviation hmm? so so this could be two extremes one is that they are wrong and the other is it's our perception that it is wrong is wrong hmm? and sometimes it could be somewhere in between most of the times it will be somewhere in between there is some there's some part of our perception also being wrong and some part of that other person also being wrong it's a combination so it's if we see some somebody doing something repeatedly it's best and if it is disturbing our mind it's best to try to get a clarification rather than making an accusation seek a clarification this person is doing like this if we are close enough to that person better go and talk with them directly if we can't then maybe a talk with some senior who who knows that person and knows us also well so they won't misunderstand us they won't misunderstand them it's best not to start talking like this about some problematic behavior of someone with the general devotee community and certainly it's it's terrible to put it on the internet <laughs> oh you know this devotee did like this there are some devotees who love to do that there are some devotees who consider it their full time service to krishna to broadcast the flaws of all other devotees to the whole world so now that is something which definitely should be avoided so i would say within the first and the third the first when there is something seriously wrong then better report to some senior devotee and if we are ourselves in a senior position then we have to we may have to confront and it's best that in such situations we talk with others instead of talk about others oh they did like this they did like that they did like that sometimes we may say that what will that person think if i ask like this yeah, that's why we have to act, act ask in a respectful way but it's important to get things clarified and if we can't then if we don't get a satisfactory explanation then better keep a distance so it's every choice bring with it the consequence if we are if we say this is wrong and we are going to uh, go for, go on a campaign to stop it then that is going to have some consequences we may alienate some devotees but we may feel this is so important i have to go on it but then go on that campaign also in a responsible way not in a like a, a blaspheming everyone but in a proper through proper channels but if we decide that i this is not what i want to get involved in then keep a distance from it and say that then it's always uh, shastra is so elastic that no everything can be accommodated within shastra now whether that accommodation is justified or not that is something is up to open discussion so you can always say vaishnava kriya mudra vigyahana bhujaye 
Now, how Vaishnavas act, we do not know. The ordinary vision cannot see. So we say that it's to me this is wrong. To me, I will not act like this, and I won't encourage animals to act in this way. But I can't rectify it right now. So let me keep a distance. So we have to be uh, willing to take the willing to bear the consequences of our choices. If you want to either change it or live with it. But quite often, if you try to clarify, things can be resolved. If you try to clarify, you seek clarification rather than make accusation. Then things can be resolved reasonably. Okay, thank you very much. We'll come back after Julian Yatra, Julian, and we'll continue. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.